Hi there and welcome to the Project Corner. Have you ever wondered how many files there are in your Project Online environment? If so, you're in luck. I'm going to share with you how to create a report just like this and I'm going to share the location where you can find this exact report. So stick around and I need to go into a, a Project Online environment. Now I want to, now first off, I want to grab a single project site that is living within the PWA that I want to track. So I already have that one here. So this is the project corner, .sharepoint.com, um, and it has a, a short name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my data and I'm going to get that from SharePoint. And I'm going to choose the uh, SharePoint folder. So once that loads, I get the option to have a site URL. And I'm just going to go and grab the root of that site in order to grab all the data that I have here. So here you already see that there are documents in here, which is great. So we're going to transform that data because we don't want to have all that data. We just want a, su a subset of the information that we have here. Um, that subset is residing in the attributes. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the size and the content type. Uh, we're not interested in kind. Um, so here we have the application uh, and well, we're going to go for the extension and we're going to for, go for the attribute size. Now know that the attribute size is in bytes. So we do want to uh, translate that to um, uh, kilobytes and we do want to translate that back to megabytes, right? Because that's typically where we're at in uh, terms of size of documentation, I would believe. So. What we're going to do is we're going to go to add column and we have this one here and we're going to change this to a uh, whole number. And with that change, and I now have the option to create a, uh, what is it, so divide. Uh, I'm going to divide this by 124 to get the kilobytes. So these are kilobytes, um, size in kilobytes. And I'm going to do a further division. And that's here. And that further division gives me the MB size, so megabytes size in megabytes. Good, now I'm going to remove a whole lot from this page. Um, and well, it's not a page, it's a, it's a query. So let's remove some things from the query. I'm going to remove the name. I'm not typically interested in that. I have the extension and I have the size in kilobytes and size in megabytes, which is very interesting. So here we go. And that is the information that we want to grab from a single project site. Now we don't want a single project site, we actually want all project sites, right? So this is going to be, this is going to be a source for my invoke function. Now invoke function is very, very powerful and you're going to love doing this. There is a add column functionality and there's the invoke custom function and it's very powerful. But before we can get to that, we need to grab the project information. So we're going to grab the project information that states the URL that we're going to use for the invoke function in this query. So let's, um, let's make it happen. So underscore API slash project data slash projects. 
and if we wait a little bit we will be able to see projects coming in good so query 2 I'm going to rename that as being my projects and this is actually going to be my invoke formula and let's change the project information and you can change this yourself as well where you might want to have more or less data in here I typically go with uh, the uh, project name so let's get that one project name and you might also be interested in the enterprise project type uh, which could be interesting and what we're looking for in particular is the project workspace internal URL now any of the other data that you want to have in here for your own analysis you can add that but make sure that that um, that project workspace internal URL is in here and you want to filter this down on having only the project sites that actually have uh, only have the projects that actually have project sites attached to it so we're going to remove the null values here and now we're going to do an invoke function on this uh, column here now how do we trigger that we go into the invoke formula and we're going to go into the advanced editor and we're going to change a set of uh, values here in the uh, in the M query now I got the formula that I want to have in my uh, in my short list so here is an explanation of what I just copied here so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the project URL and we're going to create a table in here and what we're going to do is we're going to have the source being that project URL and then the further down the lines now as I mentioned you can change your uh, formula here to add or subtract or delete or remove or change that query um, you do want to test that and what you need to do is you need to follow the script here uh, and obviously if you're a member of the um, newsletter you'll get this file for sure and it will also be available from the um, Technet galleries so there's a link in the show notes for that um, so what happens when I click on OK here or I click on done here the site changes or the page changes and this is now an invoke function or an invoke function uh, and you can type any URL in here and click on the invoke and it will work on that URL but we want to have this automated for each and every project site that we have in here so that's cool I'll select this um, this column here and I'll go into add column and I will click on the invoke custom functions I'll call this invoke and I'll say invoke formula that's this one and I'm going to set that loose on the project workspace internal URL clicking on OK now this might take a while uh, it's going to invoke the function on each and every one of those pages so it's going to grab a whole lot of data and it's going to communicate that to us and you might experience some of these errors in here those errors are actually in there because there's no attributes saying as, uh, as much as there are no files in those uh, project sites so what we're going to do is we're going to remove those rows and that's being done by that can be done by going into home remove rows remove errors so that leaves us with nine project sites with actually some data in here in there and we're going to click on this little icon here and we're going to extend that with uh, expand that with um, extensions file size in KBs and file size in MBs 
And once that's done, you'll have the complete list of all the files. Well, not all the files, all the file types and uh, their MBs and their uh, uh, KBs and their extensions. So here we know that there are uh, roughly five, that there are five documents within the risky project uh, project. Very cool. Very nice. So what are, so what are you going to do? Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's change these two being uh, whole numbers. So that way you can do some calculation here. So let's uh, click on close and apply and start changing the data. And there we go. We have a full list of all the files and all the type of files we have. So we can say, okay, invoke extension. And we have the different extensions here. And we can say, well, okay, let's have the invoke extension and let's have a count of each of those files. So we see that we have in total 125 files in our project online environment. Now, this is a demo environment of myself. So it's obvious that that is a limited set of um, files. Uh, but we can see uh, the uh, size of uh, megabytes in our environment. And there we see that it is uh, 50 megabytes. And we can even see that we have different project names. And because we have that project web uh, URL still in here, we can go into modeling and we can say that this is a web URL. And then we can say, okay, well, let's change the value. Let's make sure that that URL is actually an icon instead of the whole thing. And now it is very easy for me to look into uh, the biggest project site. Now I'm not, not going to be able to do that because I'm in an in private browser session with all the different um, credentials that I have. So, but if you are in your own environment and you are logged in uh, with the right credentials on your uh, browser as well, uh, you'll be able to go to that web page and analyze that, uh, that document or that that project site this is a, a a version of a report that i created myself based on the data and uh, i'll be providing this for free on um, my subscription base uh, newsletter so how would you go about with uh, editing this um, report you would go in and you will go into the edit queries and you would be changing the names of your project environment. So you would go in here and you would change the project corner to being your own, uh, own environment. And you would go from there and you would grow just as we did during the session where we have the KBs and the MBs. So that's the only thing that you need to do. You need to go in here and you need to go into the project sites, go into the advanced editor and change the URL that is in here and you're good to go. And um, so with that, did you like the video? It's just short introduction video uh, to the report and how I got there. Um, a more extensive how to will be available on the blog and I will have a link in the show notes for that. With that, thank you very much for uh, watching this video and I hope to see you next time.